Alrighty, I hope the connection is going to be okay. I'm going to be talking here with Eva Espinosa from Our Little Secret is Us. And here she is. I'll be asking her to join. Let's see. Uh, uh, hello, hello. I'm nice. so, yeah. yes, so I'm excited to be here. And uh, we talked in length yesterday, and yet she has no idea where I'm going to begin today because this is what you get when you work with me. <laughs> That's why, but not I just with you. That's why we wear with. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be boring, and that's the nine to five that we're gonna discuss. I'm gonna put my headphones so I can hear you perfectly. So, while she's getting herself set up, I'm just going to start a little conversation here about what are we here for, why I'm doing these sessions, why am I here speaking with all of you, and bringing some of my dear friends on here to explore this idea. And I titled this particular live, What Are We Living For? And I want to begin with a little introduction of today because today marks the one year anniversary of my dad's passing. And it couldn't be any more perfect for me to begin these conversations. One, obviously starting here with Eva, but also, and also to recognize what are we living for? And I had, and I'm probably gonna be emotional throughout this time because obviously this is a very special day. Um, and why I'm making this today was actually unintentional. I didn't even realize this is going to be the day, but as I was exploring this idea of what I'm going to talk about, it became extremely clear why today, why right now? And it's especially in those moments when things are happening in our lives that we are making certain changes in our lives. And so what's really, really interesting is that sometimes we don't know what causes us to take on certain actions in our lives. And so what I wanted to really bring in here is that if and when you ever lose someone in your life, you will get a better idea of what you're living for and why you are on this planet. And so for me, when this day came a year ago, I was really moved in a positive way. Moved, obviously, also that losing someone that is very close to me isn't the easiest thing. And at the same time, it gave me even more pressure on like understanding what life is for, what am I trying to get to? And this is what really the sense of these week's conversations are here to do is community. The number one community we grow up in is family. Whatever kind of family that you're seeing it, be it your parents that you grew up with, or maybe it's just a different kind of caregiver that was giving you these experience of first time on this planet. And we lose track over the years on how much this first community that we're having really means to us. Because I'm sure Eva can talk about this even in her own experience of why she chose this purpose. Because what we are experiencing in our lives through our families has an incredible impact on why we do what we do, be it a nine to five or be it something completely out of the um, ordinary, be it something that you didn't even realize you were going about your days, right? Like, let's say you do your nine to five, maybe there is something in there that is a reflection of security, safety, be it financial security, right? But something inside of us is really seeking this, the sense of safety. And that's at the end of the day, what we're struggling with throughout our lives is where is my safety? Where is my security? Where is my comfort? And there are moments, especially when we're looking out into the world, that that safety and that comfort is not provided. So that's where all of us that will be coming together in this week uh, and, and next week and ongoing, which we will discuss, 
have really gotten to is connecting to our inner self, our heart, our center. And whenever things on the outside is throwing us into a loop and we don't know what up and down is, we come back to our center. And as I call the series business of self, it really is a better understanding of who am I so that I can make better choices and, and a greater impact on who I am within the world, within my environment, within the community that I surround myself in. So either way, this was my little introduction just to give you a little sense of why, why are we talking here and what is this really about? And as we are talking, Eva and I, as well as the ongoing uh, conversations I'm having with Swati, with Diana, uh, there's Maria, and then there is also Lisa tomorrow, uh, that we will be exploring this through different modalities. And uh, I will give this to Eva in just a moment. So my, my name is Raditya Lasri. I'm from Mindful Being. And um, this is where we begin. So welcome, Eva. Thank you for letting me introduce a little bit here for a few minutes and uh, for your patience. So yes, Eva, tell us a little bit about you or whatever arose for you as I was introducing our sessions here. Well, the, the whole topic that we want to develop is the business of ourselves. And what I have of what you have shared is that the business of being yourself has to reconciliate uh, your intentions to have these inspiring conversations with the reality of that today is a crucial day for your, um, you know, for your grieving, for your acknowledging of someone not being in your life like is your dad. And this is part of being in business, isn't it? <laughs> because w w when, when we are um, functioning, like when we are like going out into life, like we have a childhood and we have a, a moment in where we can just become some high adults and manage ourselves. And then we have an opportunity of parenting and either like through our roles as they we keep growing or through our families. And those roles, hopefully are three roles we're going to explore through all of our relationships, including the relationship we have with ourselves because there are moments where we just need to turn into a ball and just say, I'm feeling this and I'm not capable to show up fully as an adult. And there are moments where we can be adults and then just say, all right, I have to defend myself here and what, and, you know, get this done, but at the same time be aware that I'm maybe leaving other things out that are important. And other times where we have to support other people because we are in a better space or because that's the role we have taken by our choice of either work or, or family and, and hierarchy. So the business is actually to organize your days, isn't it? Like if you are going to show up to your, uh, to your thing, the first thing is acknowledging where you are and what kind of energy you have and how you enter um, that space. And that's something that for me in my business, which is, you know, um, my life, my life is my practice. <laughs> that's the most important thing. I had to first start with being honest with myself. Where is it? How do I start my day? What are the things that are ruminating in my head? And now that I'm going to show up to do my role, my as a, as a business owner, as as someone who's going to earn money, how I'm going to interact with someone, and maybe the first space is actually to um, cross check the energy of the other person to see where they are and share about a little bit of ours. So then we can just have like like we do now a little bit of a common space for where we can move without an agenda the agenda has become what is current for us right now and for that say i want to send a lot of love to your dad and to all the dads and parents and people that we will be losing through our life because that's part of uh, uh, recognizing the value and that's also part of like a very curated sense of our living because the people that really are meaningful to us I feel that they're going to be really always living in our hearts and in our memories. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll celebrate your 
Father Life today and hopefully this is something that inspired to anyone or all of us who are actually going through the process of losing something by choosing something, isn't it? Because that's the other thing that happens when you choose a nine to five, you know, you, you make an option or you choose a person or you do something by saying some, to do something to yes, we are saying no to many other things. So how we make that connection to um, to make it our business, to know what we're saying for yes or no, to, to know what we are working for, to know what is our purpose, is a constant uh, relationship, a conversation we must do to support uh, uh, between ourselves and with other people. Yeah, exactly. And I think I really want to make a distinction here between what we maybe talk about, what our purpose is, and what a person that maybe doesn't want to or has no interest in creating something on their own, right? Like, and I, we keep talking about nine to fives because I want to make a recognition that choosing a nine to five is a great option for many. And I find it, I want to bring in, which why I want to talk about this as well is that just because it's something that maybe doesn't warm our hearts from the moment we step into a, an office, let's say, right? Or into a space that we're gonna spend eight hours. And it's like, wow, this is exactly why I wake up every morning. It's like, maybe that's not how we're always feeling. And yet there might be a little flame inside of us that does recognize, I actually am doing this for something bigger than this everyday thing, right? Sure. Which is my family, which is the people around us. And so that is what I'm trying to really support people here is that what we're living for can be as small as appreciating our families when we do have the time to be together, to be on our own even. And I, I think there is a lot that you can add as well. It's like about this aspect of when I am by myself, that a lot of times we feel that this is a part of being lonely, being alone. And I want to increase this awareness of when I am by myself, there is a lot of opportunities to listen to my own voices because the moment we enter a space, even the space where we are now together, right? Any space that includes other people, other things such as music, sounds, and other inputs from the external world has a huge impact on how we communicate our inner needs. And so the series that I, the series that I have now with all of you, the people that I mentioned earlier, including you, Eva, is really to find this inner peace, this way of, you know, what am I living for? not only in community, but also, and also by myself, right? Like understanding like what is the purpose, me being by myself, having these quiet times where I'm shutting off all the external things. And actually Lisa will come on tomorrow and I had a conversation with her that sometimes these things to like to exclude them, to really turn off these uh, mediums around us can help us to go more inward. And I would love for you to share with us a little bit of how that process has been for you in the past few years. I, I, in terms of loneliness, I always going to be very inclined with this sentence of Marilyn Monroe, which it was really stuck into my head when I was a child and I obviously a great admire her. And she said, loneliness is like being in a party full and surrounded by people and only think of those ones that are not there. So because of um, where I have position in my life, which wasn't necessarily a... a, a you know, a, a sense of aware and kind of like coming and living in the UK and making my uh, work here and developing here with our family and, and and having a business and where I'm working on my own. And then, you know, having a marriage that fell and where I was also working on my own. And then having to put all those things together and having to even seclude myself in a time where, you know, my energy was very skated to... Um, be doing other things or being with another people. Um, I have somehow 
have a more face to face um sense with with that loneliness what loneliness is and loneliness is the capacity or not to show up to yourself uh in a way that you acknowledge so loneliness starts from that very you know key element which is saying i may be alone but i'm not letting me alone <laughs> you know uh because because that's what i mean like we could be thinking that loneliness is is like being um not having the people that we need but it but letting ourselves alone is just like really denying ourselves from the basic needs of what will make a change and what will have an impact in our present and future you know so i think there's 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 a two really important elements. We can just feel alone because of who's around us, or we can feel alone because we are letting down our own uh, needs and we are not showing for the very things we are capable of, of doing for ourselves and we are making someone else responsible for that. So even if you're alone, you know, and also like one, one of the things is, is that we don't get really teach because um, we shouldn't, you know, in a way we have been um, derouted in a life where we be uh, all the time more individual and we can feel more isolated from our partners and we can feel more isolated from the way we communicate with other people because everyone is watching and no one really is interacting with us necessarily and this is kind of like where our communication is going to be going but you don't turn a blind eye to yourself so, and this happened, for example, with something like pain. I have a pain on the shoulder, oh, you know, like I'm not going to pay attention. That pain or discomfort is starting to become something bigger. Now I can't move my shoulder. So that, that's an inconvenience and I'm not going to pay attention to that. So at the end, I got a frozen el <laughs> arm. So now I can move my arm. So that's the first relationship of being alone. Are we letting our own internal um, dialect of our body with ourselves? Are we together with that or are we alone? Because that's the first, that's the first thing. You need to be in partnership with your body. You need to be in partnership with your body because your body is going like, to give you a landscape to understand how the emotions are impacting you. And because actually with our bodies, we have the first um, a space for creating change, you know, because I'm going to feel very different. Like if I have that pain, if I actually do gentle movement, I put a hot patch, like, you know, two guys who prefer not even going to the doctor, they if I deny the system and I just continue like, you know, doing some, you know, labor that is actually putting more strain on that. So that's the first where where are you together <laughs> with yourself and where are you alone uh, uh, among others that would be my first point yeah yeah i think what i hear you say especially is that if you are unable to be by yourself in peace with all the discomfort that it comes with we can even then find ourselves alone even if there are people around us meaning it starts right here being aware of what is going on internally bringing back what you said earlier about being honest with ourselves which actually was my word of the year <laughs> which i thought yeah. was so funny brought us back up and it just starts there right to really describe this without excuses or you know just being like, okay, what is really present for me, right? What is really inside of me? This anger, this sadness, this loneliness, whatever we, we identify or not identify as, but what we can identify is happening inside of us and then move with that and explore it and be curious about what is there instead of shutting it down and putting it away like you described with this injury in my shoulder, for example, right? Like really like seeing like, okay, what is not working? Is there maybe something I could do to improve the, the stability or, or the movement? And uh, so it's like interesting how you bring in the, you know, this curiosity piece, because I am a big, <laughs> big supporter of curiosity and creativity and just looking outside the box. I mean, this is also why we're meeting together in these conversations is to expand our own horizons. Because one thing I felt was like, oh, I feel like 
I'm alone, I'm lonely on this track to spread the word. And I was like, well, as I'm talking to all my friends who are really heart-centered people who are doing amazing things, experiencing the same issues, right? But yet we're not alone because if we're all experiencing the same things, how about coming back together? Because if we then come back together, what will happen is we're together, right? Meaning we're not alone anymore. And so I think what's really interesting is the moment that we are expressing how we're actually feeling just to ourselves, ex like um, allows us to connect to other people outside of us that might experience the same thing. And I'm bringing back, you know, I mean, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. no I was just thinking that, yeah, like first of all, one of the things that made you feel not alone is actually uh, connecting with another person. So, for example, like one of the one of my um, goals this year is when I see something online or when I see a person, it's just to acknowledge them. You know, it's just to that's that's basically acknowledge them in a way that they are aware that they are have a knowledge. That means, a k you send in a message or you say I'm thinking of you, or you say you look amazing, or you say how's your day. Or you say something, but that means that I'm forcing like non-verbal communication, so the other person have a chance to respond. Because I think part of that loneliness is like you know being in a tube, surrounded by all these people, not connecting with anyone, and actually just thinking, oh, you know, this is this, this city sack, everyone is doing. But are, are you actually trying to engage with someone? Are you actually looking at that person and smile? Because I think the more that I do that and I operate it from this space, the more responses I see, you know, like, and then, for example, rules, going to a bath, how are you doing? How is your day? He's the driver, he's probably tired, or she's the driver. And really for that with traffic and now how like I'm productive, you know, like we humans move through traffic areas, which is relationships are like traffic isn't it we get into jams we get into stuff like someone is not doing what we want so all of this is very symbolic so actually i've been doing this for a long while and i can see like you know like some people reacted or not but it's important also not to feel the reaction it's important to um or like i was thinking yesterday of my bus uh, coming up i say hi to the thing and then i sat next to a man who i could see it was really easy walking to the bus it was his energy was really good and we just basically side by side and i went out and i went like this and he went the same way and so was the driver he'd say goodbye to me and i was like I haven't literally connected with two people that shouldn't. And one of the things that make not fulfill this prophecy of feeling lonely in and also don't fulfill this prophecy of having a rhetoric and also increases your happiness is actually to interact with people we normally don't. Okay, because the people that we are constantly we interact with, especially if we are not feeling hurt, because one of the first priorities and one of the first needs of us humans and how we make long lasting relationships is not necessarily because we are having all these common things in where we are ideal and we are equal and we like the same things. The more that we stay with a partner, the more that we stay with our parents or our kids, the less the dynamic is excellent and everyone is like really on practice and balancing so that we're going to annoy one another. We're not going to do the things, but actually that doesn't really break a relationship. The having a difference doesn't break a relationship. What break a relationship is me not being here is me telling you something over and over that you are constantly dismissive. So I feel dismissed because you're not hearing me. The moment that we create a moment in where we uh, feel that we are here and we respect, then we have an opportunity for something else. Yeah, great. And I think as we are slowly, I know six minutes can feel a long time, but well, as we're closing out a little bit here, uh, I really sense this first session that we've had today, this first conversation around business of self is really just having like a check-in of like, okay, where am I? What's the outside world? How can I make connections to myself while making increased connection to people I don't even know, strangers. And what I found actually just this morning, uh, I was walking where I usually walk and there is this guy 
guy that I've met for the past two some years. When I first met him, he shared with me that he lost his partner uh, just recently or a few years ago. And so guess what? I met him this morning was able, the only person I spoke to this morning that wasn't my spouse or my son was this guy. And I was able to share with him about to the anniversary. And he right away was like, just be happy. You know, he's like, that's what we're here to do is to be happy, to be whole, to just enjoy life. And you know what? And later on, I saw him again on the way out. And he said, like, just remember, they are in heaven and they don't want to come down. They're happy where they are. So just make the best of it. So really to close out today, what is something that you out of your own business, which is in hair, but also coaching and other uh, endeavors that include just our whole well-being of the human. What is it something that you recommend or how would you ask someone to start or give them some advice on that? To start a journey, you only have to just do the first step. It is, I think it finishes better than perfect. I think like sometimes we idealize the processes. And as I say, it's just like making a small commitment of like saying, you know what, I'm going to acknowledge my family or my partner by waking up and say good morning. And, you know, or I'm going to acknowledge myself by just checking up and say, hey, you know, today you operated tired hangover or with a lot of energy or you know and i'm gonna try to just have a you know that moment on front of the mirror as you're washing your teeth and you say hey you know i'm showing up today this way okay i'm aware of that now what is it the tiny things that i can do like finishing you know doing your bed leaving things tidy you know that's all like tiny things that we can make choices and by making those choices we are basically uh, getting towards a route of our direction but also uh, because i think we didn't say this when we have chosen something or someone and they we look at this nine to five or we look at this relationship as something that doesn't complete us um i think it's really important to realize that we still have to to show commitment because that's even if it doesn't complete us even if it's not what we're expecting it requires our energy and attention and and we may not have that sense of purpose in there but there's a purpose of us being together which is how can i use this person or this space of work or something to learn about myself to learn to learn about what is right and what is not and that just happened by actually you know, start making notes and start uh, allowing the communication that come in to be felt in your body and, and to just say, yeah, like, you know, like I will feel this and then try this other thing and then have a third perspective of like how my feeling and my trying with some new elements can just take me to a different place than if I just have the certainty where with this mindset and don't do anything different. Oh, I, I love it. Because what you really talk about is that the journey isn't over until our life is over. So don't just rest and lean back thinking like, oh, I've got this, it's all done. Because the moment you relax, the moment you think it's all good, that's when all the messages come up. It's like, hold on, don't get too excited yet. The, everyone is still on their um, journey on, you know, figuring things out. So I love what you said. I hope people will uh, get something from this conversation that we're having. This is not the last conversation. Eva and I also having conversations outside of this particular session. So this will coming out in soon. And we are just so excited to start these conversations to make our own lives more attainable, more livable, more exciting and joyful while understanding that sometimes just it is what it is without trying to make it something incredible, crazy, but just being present with one another and just share love. 
So yes, thank you so much, Eva, for being here with me today. And okay. um, until next time. And yes. everyone else, thank you so much for watching. For watching, for, yeah, for yeah. hearing. And yes, and for, and for like, actually, that's what I mean. Like, like maybe doing something unexpected today, which is coming and check out what our, our blurs and hopefully, you know, that that's, that's something different that's showing up. And I've been seeing some faces that I recognize. And I just want to say, since as we think the ideal is for me to participate, this is how I want to affect the world. And you're changing jobs because in one, you know, one, you have the mission and you have the belief, but you don't have the support. And then you move to another job. And then in that one, there's no mission, but you don't even get the support either. So there's never going to be a perfect situation you know i think what it can be gone better not perfect is how we relate to that in a way that we actually just realize that the first attention is to ourselves and to the immediate like people that we can affect on that day so yeah just i think lots of love and positive vibes and and yeah just to remind it that even the people that we lose remind us that it's more important to be present as this person was saying you know it's not that we want to bring other people from there is that that we want by them perhaps being in heaven if that's what you believe feel that that we are participating a little bit more there because there's someone that we love that isn't in a space where they come and they're not fighting anymore so we can reconciliate that in our heart and celebrate their lives as they live within us oh wonderful yes this is exactly what came to mind as i was thinking about all the things that i'm trying to do and bringing out and talking about mindfulness and all such is to help more people that maybe didn't have the opportunity in their lifetime to feel more free within themselves. So thanks again for watching. Please come back tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time and at 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So I'll hope to see you then. And thanks again, Eva. Till next Pleasure. time. Bye.